There is a backdrop uh, to the video that I'm going to share. I had a discussion in the evening with my mother-in-law, who's 89, and she was saying, well, you're talking about Christ and all these things of value uh, to you, but none of the people around here, my neighbors, none of them believe the same way you do. They believe that homosexuality is just fine, that you know most men uh, are not going to be faithful to their wives, and uh, that uh, we're in a situation where the Bible, even among our Jewish relatives, has been written by men. Don't you think it, men wrote it? And I said, no, I don't. This is going to be a long discussion, but it's also indicative of the times that we're living in. But I explained to her that a born-again man that's really given his life to Jesus Christ is going to look different than the world. You're going to be faithful to your wife. That's the norm if you love Jesus more than anything else in your life. And the Bible talks about homosexuality in the end times and how men are going to burn after men, women after women, and all these unnatural desires, and that God's going to give them over to a reprobate mind to the deception. And this is all indicative of something that's been going on in America for the last 50 years. I went to bed troubled by this, and while I was uh, sleeping, I woke up with these thoughts on my mind, and I remembered this John MacArthur video. Now, I want to say something about John MacArthur. He's a cessationist, meaning the gifts are believed by him to end it in the first century with the apostles. But I want to say something. He's still a good man, and he gets so much right. This message is right on. And I listen to people, so does my wife, all across the spectrum of Christianity. There's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. So this is one of those messages that I think is so good by John. And then I shared it with my mother-in-law the next day. The things that she's seeing around her are symptoms of a society that's in decline and a nation that's going to be judged. They were brutally blasphemous of him. They killed the prophets. They killed the son. And God has to bring in new stewards. Those are the apostles, and they give us the truth including the resurrection, and we follow the apostles' teaching as revealed in the New Testament. So how does that apply to us? What I was saying in the last week when I was going through some of these passages is that it can be for a generation of people too late, too late for 8th century Israel, too late for 1st century Israel. But it can be too late for every nation. Acts 14, God says He allows all the nations to go their own way. How do you know when a nation passes the point where salvation is possible for a people? Well, Romans 1, we've talked about it. Romans 1, wrath, God gave them over to sexual immorality. God gave them over to homosexuality. God gave them over to a reprobate mind, a non-functioning mind. So when you see a nation deep in sexual sin, pervasively affirming of homosexuality and the insanity of a reprobate mind where they make laws to criminalize righteousness and to legalize gross evil, you know that nation's under judgment. And the message to this nation our message to this nation, if you say to the Lord, here am I, send me, the message is this. It's too late for the nation. We're under judgment. But it's not too late for the elect. 
because, as Romans 11 says, some are chosen. They can believe, they will believe when we proclaim the gospel. What's our message to this nation? You're under judgment. It's too late. Judgment has been unleashed. You can hear but not understand. You can see but not perceive. Your heart may be attracted but hardened by God. But God has His people. So we warn because we don't know who those people are. And we also offer the grace of the gospel. That's our calling. Too late for a nation, not too late for the elect. Father, we thank You for Your Word. It is not obscure. It is not hard to understand. It is crystal clear. Salvation is by grace, and at the present time a remnant according to Your gracious choice is being gathered. What most may be seeking is not obtained, but those who were chosen obtained it, and the rest were hardened. It's really a terrifying reality, reminiscent of the flood where Noah, for 120 years, a preacher of righteousness, warns the world of judgment. And after 120 years of warning, there are only eight souls that escape. This is human history. People harden their hearts so long that they go past a point and it becomes too late. That is certainly the history of all the nations, and ours as well. But may we cry out with warning of the existing judgment and the far worse judgment to come in the afterlife, and may we call sinners to repent and believe and tell them there is no salvation in any other than Jesus Christ. He is the Son, the stone, rejected, resurrected, and in whom alone is salvation. Thank You for Your grace to us. And we ask that You would use us to call your own to yourself, because they cannot come unless they hear the message concerning Christ. May that be ever on our hearts and lips, we pray, for His sake, amen.